When I read the scripts for season three, I, I, was, uh, I was very excited. He's just created what I believe to be the best one yet. It's just completely action-packed. I think a lot of people were expecting this explosive ending in the last one, which didn't quite happen, but this year they won't be disappointed. I don't think I've ever been more excited and terrified to read scripts like this. So, uh, yeah, I just feel really lucky to be a part of it, to be honest. OK, thank you. Operation Damson is an ongoing initiative aimed at detection slash prevention of gangland murders. Uh, season three continues in the tradition of uh, Line of Duty having a new serial story with each series. So we introduce a brand new uh, police officer who's under investigation for corruption, uh, Sergeant Danny Waldron, played by Daniel Mays. He's a firearms officer who's involved in the shooting of a suspect and there are suspicious circumstances surrounding that shooting which then brings in our investigators from the anti-corruption unit AC12 who are our regular returning characters of um, Steve Arnott played by Martin Compton, Kate Fleming played by uh, Vicky McClure and Ted Hastings who's the commander of the unit played by Adrian Dunbar. The suspect was an armed criminal with a history of violence posing an immediate and credible threat to the public. In respect of Operation Damson, on May 13th, the Strategic Firearms Commander authorised the use of firearms. Under Section 3 of the Criminal Law Act 1967, I am also entitled to use such force as is reasonable in the circumstances to prevent crime. And under Section 117 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, I am entitled to use reasonable force in the exercise of police powers. Under common law, I have the lawful right to use lethal force for preservation of life or in self-defence where this threat is immediate. At no time has anyone in this room put forward credible evidence that I acted unlawfully. The main story of development is they're investigating uh, an armed firearm unit. So. Obviously, the police are in a lot more jeopardy at that time because the guys are investigating have got access to guns. Sign that you understand the law regarding the legal use of force as outlined by the SFC. You'll each sign out your weapon. You'll each sign out the type of ammunition and the number of rounds. I hate guns. When you're sort of on set and you know everything's pretend and it's, you know, you can have a bit of fun with it, but actually, when you first handle it, it's quite a scary concept. Um, and I did have to go and learn how to shoot a gun. So I did go to an armory and shoot a gun for real, which was an experience, because there's never going to come a time in my life that I'm going to get to do that. And the power of these guns it does make you appreciate, you know, I don't want to get into, like, a, you know, a, a debate about it, but it does make you appreciate the sort of power that these things have. Um, so feeling that was, yeah, it was really, it was great fun in that respect, but I was in a controlled environment. I'm a police! And then handling them on set and using them, you know, it does, it sort of changes you, the way that you sort of stand and um, it made me feel hard. <laughs> this investigation is far from over, sir. As far as I'm concerned, we've only just scratched the surface. Uh, at the start of season three, about a year has gone by, a year to 18 months since the end of season two. So we're in a situation where um, they've investigated a number of other cases. Um, they're more experienced. Um, they are um, much more settled in their roles. In terms of their personal lives, though, uh, things aren't so rosy for uh, Superintendent Hastings. He's separated from his wife. The same goes for Kate Fleming. She's separated from her partner. But in contrast to that, Steve Arnott, who tended to have the most checkered personal life, has, has settled down into a steady relationship with another police officer who's a, a new character to the series, Detective Sergeant uh, Sam Railston, played by Aisha Hart. What's supposed to do with these? Happy anniversary. 
It's interesting because you've got a strong core cast with Vicky McClure, Martin Compton, Aidan Dunbar. Um, and bringing in any guest character is also going to stand out. And the difference this time is rather than bringing in just one guest with Danny Mays, we also have his team behind him as well. So we have Asher Ali, we have Will Meller, we have Liam Best who've come in playing Harry, Rod and Jackie. So there is a team behind the guest team and that allows us to investigate more story, basically. Oi! You gonna tell us how it went with AC-12? You first. We stuck to the story, mate. And that you gave us much of a choice. That's we all stuck to the story. You know? I think being Series 3, we're quite settled now in terms of preparing for it. I think preparing for Line of Duty is preparing for the lines of duty. <laughs> There's so many of them. How did you keep fire? Are you losing it out there, fella? I cite under common law my lawful right to use lethal force for preservation of life or in self-defence where this threat is immediate. Yes, and in response, I cite Section 117 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, the use of reasonable force, and for the tip, the emphasis is mine and not contained in the act. That's an easy argument from behind a desk, sir. From behind this desk, Sergeant, we uphold standards. Our trademarks became these long interview scenes, which are a challenge. You know, it's like, it's like having a mini play. And it's very brave for TV, and I think the final episode, I've never seen anything like this done on TV before. You know, it's, it's a bit of a, a mad ending to it, but the majority of it takes place around one table. I know for a final film, it's very brave, but it's what's so good about Jed's writing. It's so exciting, and it's literally just three people sitting around a table with chunks of paper, just throwing this information back each and for, uh, each other. Um, but they are tough. Things get a wee bit fuzzy for me here, Sergeant. Maybe you could be a ray of sunshine and burn off the fog. Hmm? It was something that um, that grew out of series one. I mean, in some ways, you know, television over the years has fragmented its its scenes and. And so to have a really long, you know, static interview scene, you know, it felt initially, I suppose, a, a bit of a gamble. But we shot it very early on. And I, I remember looking at the rushes and then seeing a very rough assembly. And I just thought it was, it was fantastic because you've got such strength of writing and brilliant actors all in a concentrated environment. The tape, I'm referring to a transcript of an interview with you on May 21st. D.I. Cotton and I repeatedly ask you if there were inaccuracies in your account of Sergeant Waldron's shooting of Ronan Murphy. We've now gone up to sort of 27 pages on this series for some of the interrogation scenes. You know, we need two or even three cameras so that we can both achieve the scene during the course of a shooting day, but also so that the actors don't come out exhausted. Because if you're doing 15 or even 20 minute takes, you know, you don't want to be doing that too many times, but you also need a huge amount of coverage in order to sustain that kind of length of scene. So I think now we're used to them, we plan for them, we have rehearsals before we shoot them with the cast, we usually have three cameras, and we have a brilliant cast who are word perfect, which means that, you know, we can shoot 23, 25 page scenes in a day. Stand away from the door. I had no intention of coming back, didn't think I was coming back. I thought Lindsay was going to prison for 30 years and, uh, and that would be that. But um, uh, because Jed's writing is so brilliant uh, and just the way that it, that it all panned out, um, I think she was just a character that really caught people's imagination. Um, and so I was asked to, to come back. Did you fabricate the improper relations between you and Detective Sergeant Arnott? No. Did you fabricate the planting of evidence against you? No. Lindsay Denton, aren't you an artful, devious person who has betrayed the trust placed in her as a police officer? No. And haven't you repeatedly and shamelessly connived to obstruct those who would bring you to justice? No, I haven't! The thing that's really exciting about Line of Duty to me is, is Lindsay Denton. There's nobody else like her. I've never played anybody like her. I don't think anybody else has ever played any, anybody like her. Um, she she, we never quite know what, what we're getting. No prior information of the operation to move Tommy Hunter. No prior information, no prior, no prior knowledge. I mean, she's just fascinating. She's so multi-layered and 
just keeps you guessing. Thanks, Jed. <laughs> it's all in the writing. <laughs> I couldn't agree more that the question of your sexual integrity quite rightly made the jury sceptical. But I've got a recording that will be of interest to you all. All right, now, this just isn't the time or the place. Now is exactly the time and exactly the place. It, it's been great for me, this series, because I, I love playing this character and I love playing these things, but a lot of the information comes through, Steve. According to the FA1, you were issued with a Glock 17 service pistol, serial number Mike, November 87465. And act in terms, it's sort of not like, it's a bit cliche to say the bad guy's exciting, but Lenny's part in the first series, Keeley's part in the second series, that's where all the, 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 the conflict and other bad, other good, you know, that's exciting for actors to play, whereas a lot of time I'm going like, image 92, 43, ballistic, blah, 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 you know, a lot of that's, I'm just telling the audience where they're going, whereas this one, Steve's in a bit of trouble. And uh, I kind of get to stretch my acting legs a bit as the series goes on, so that, that's, been, that's been really enjoyable. I've had my whole life put on trial, and now it's your turn. You've been charged and tried, but the one person that refuses to examine what you're accused of is you. I'm innocent. The question is, are you? The big difference with Kate, I would say, is the relationship that she has with Steve and Dot. Nice work. Just doing my job, mate. It's quite conflicted with Steve. They're not getting on so well. Um, and Dot and Kate are getting on in a kind of more ways than one. And a second's here, if you fancy. Any more, and I won't get off this sofa. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest character to play. It's the most fun uh, because you're being all sorts uh, of. You're, wet, you're constantly taking a hat off and putting it back on. Um, so for an actor, it's, it's difficult for me. I've got to keep remembering who, what type of person I am in, in every specific scene and to who. Um, so you've got to keep on the ball all the time. What are you doing? Why don't you just take the money? Because I'm a police officer! in Dot as uh, the very sort of calm, cool, collected um, criminal that he is. Uh, and this year we see him flat. The unflappable becomes flat and it's, uh, it's kind of terrifying for him, uh, for him to lose it at such a high level, because we haven't seen that before. So that's been really interesting for me. I've got serious concerns about D.I. Cotton's performance of his duties under police conduct regs, and that's why he's having a go at me. Sir, this is completely out of order. During a search of Danny Waldron's flat, he failed in his duty to order the necessary forensics. He then induced a junior rank to hide this from me so I wouldn't find out he missed a crucial lead. Listen. I knew things were going to come to a head between uh, Steve and Dot this series, um, in one way or another. And it turns out, actually, Steve kind of gets uh, sidelined in that thing, but I knew one of us just because you need to, as much as it's reality, you need to give the fans a payoff. You know, something, because the other one quite ended, there needs to be something at the end when they all go, wow. And um, they've definitely got it this year. But yeah, so we've got, um, we became a right tight little group of friends, you know, uh, me, Vicky, Adrian and Craig, and Lenny coming in, Keely coming in, and Neil Morrissey, TV's Neil Morrissey. But the special, the four of us have been really close and uh, our little group has now broken up, sad to say. I had intended that um, meeting in a more social setting would make this less confrontational between us. Yeah. We've only just got started. I would like the um, chicken liver pate and the sea bass. I'll be right back. Thanks, and I'll have the soup, followed by the uh, sirloin steak, medium well, and uh, no sauce. There's a little bit of uh, something happening that's uh, outside the, the main storyline, um, uh, a separate storyline for himself, uh, but not really 
a huge amount of uh, private life because the actual main storylines are so involved. So I think he's going to be, you know, keeping his head down and trying to work out who the baddies are. Sir, with respect, there's no operational reason to drag our feet out of a fair bank. <laughs> I know how to conduct an anti-corruption case, Steve. With respect, again, sir, I'm becoming concerned this inquiry is dragging his feet. I'm not the issue here, son. Sir? I can't have you interviewing Fairbank because of the suspicions hanging over your head. That's why we're dragging our feet here against my better judgment. Still this crap about me planting evidence against Lindsay Listen, Denton. We'll bring Fairbank in, but I can't have you in the room. I will not risk jeopardizing future prosecutions. Well, you're taking me off the case. Don't make this harder than it is, son. Well, well, harder than protecting a former chief super who just happens to be a mason. You are way out of line. I saw your handshake. You do not know the first thing. I know you're trying to take me off a case that involves senior officers covering up child abuse. The suspicions against you are more than just planting evidence, Steve. There's quite a lot happening with him. Um, although it's very difficult to answer that question without telling you what's going on in Series 3. I'm just doing my job. And I'm doing mine. And it's called Nick and Bent Coppers. And I don't care whether it's one rotten apple or the whole bloody barrel. There's a line, it's called right and wrong. And I know which side my duty lies. So why don't you write a nice letter of resignation to the PCC, or I swear to God, I will drag you down with the rest of them. In many ways, as the series progresses, you'll see that, that the drama focuses very much on the internal conflicts of the unit as much as it does on um, the conflict with the, with the antagonist, the, the police officer that's under investigation. We have an officer undercover probing for weaknesses in the team's statements. Has she found any? <laughs> Not yet, but she's only just started. So she hasn't? Look, I've seen enough bent coppers in my time to know when one of them is hiding something. You know why I've been appointed? To ensure that anti-corruption inquiries don't get pulled apart in court to everyone's embarrassment. Yeah, well, we'd all be severely embarrassed if Daniel Waldron manages to pull something like this off again. We are protecting the public, and sometimes that means we have to protect them from our own officers. After series two and the acclaim we had, there's always that worry, you know, what's the third album going to be like? But even from the very early conversations with Jed and hearing what he had planned and seeing the early outlines and those evolving into a brilliant first script, the casting of Danny Mays, I felt, look, we've got something very strong here. And, you know, it, series two set a very high bar, but I really hope that that series three will at least match that. Uh, and that excites me. And I think we're also, with series three, it retains the, the strong thriller that series two had. But I think there's a, there are kind of very pertinent underlying political themes that emerge during the course of the series, which will, you know, hopefully get a lot of talk about. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Catching criminals is tough enough, but catching coppers, God, give me strength. There are a lot of police dramas on TV, and I think that what makes Line of Duty distinctive is that it's cops versus cops. Most police dramas are the police hunting and chasing criminals, whereas we have police officers um, in a quest to bring other police officers to justice. And also, we're a serial. We do six uh, hours of one story. So we, we have lots of layers. We can get, get much more deeper into the story. And that, I think, allows us to do the, the big surprising twists and turns because we have the, the time to establish um, the, the direction of the story.